guilty of impatience, impatience, intolerance, whatever shape or form it takes. Working in a group of people coming from various different backgrounds require a lot of patience. Because our biological makers, our environmental upbringing, our education, formally, informally, are different. And we need to appreciate that difference is a human condition that must be appreciated by those who believe in organization. If we will be able to deal with impatience, I'm sure we'll be dealing with number one trigger of disunity, thereby uniting ourselves so that we can show ourselves strong and forceful. The second trigger of disunity is abuse of office and disrespect for office. Office holders, how do we carry ourselves about? You are acting general secretary, so you are the chief servant. You should not be seen lauding yourself by anybody. You have to say. Osanifu said something that go and live with the people. Stay where they are. Learn of them and build on what they know. That's what organization is about. You can only do that by respecting your office. But on the other side, members of the party must also respect the offices that we have in our constitution. You can't go and elect a chairperson and disrespect that chairperson. No one would be happy with that. We all have our human elements. And anybody who feels disrespected cannot put out their best. Let's deal with that. Office holders, respect your offices, don't abuse them. Members, respect your office holders. And that's what comradeship is supposed to be about. The third trigger of disunity. It's corruption and dishonesty. Ah. And Congress, <laughs> corruption is often translated in material terms of money. No! The fundamental to corruption starts in the mind. What is your knowledge of your identity? You're a CPP member. Who is a CPP member? What are the cardinal principles that define a CPP member? What is your commitment? What's your loyalty? What do you know about how this country was founded? The principles on which it was supposed to be built, that today we have deviated. We must begin to appreciate our ideology. The principles that Kwame Nkrumah founded this party on. Number one was the liberty of the individual. Second is the collective survival of all of us. What affects Kwame Nkrumah must be seen as affecting Kwame Nkrumah Jr. What affects the Raya Jantua must be seen as affecting Kodafari. What is affecting Haji Amdatu Ibrahim must be seen as affecting Nana Yafrupoma. That is how we are supposed to be. And if we know ourselves, nobody will misrepresent us to ourselves. The fourth one, which for me is the most cardinal one, is rumor, rumor mail, and falsehood. Yes, see, and there are many broadcasts when Nkrumah lamented and bemoaned this fact. I care, I care. Yes, see, yes, see. Why not say they can't mention the name? And we open ourselves up to rumor from outsiders who know nothing about our party, who want to spread falsehood and destroy our unity. This person said that. Who is that person? We can't mention names. Yes, see, why not? Let us learn to avoid rumor mail. If I hear something about Comrade uh, Rashid Alam, I should be able to boldly confront him, but of course in a respectful manner. But that will not build in your unhappiness. The last trigger of this unit is what I call unfaithfulness to the party. People's Party, like any organization, is run by a structure, a system called the Convention People's Party. The national constitution of the party. That is what makes the party supreme. If there are any issues, that is why we elected to be governed by that law. We 
we should go according to them. How much do we adhere to the principles of our own constitution? Having said this, I want to submit on this 71st anniversary that if we all shall commit to comradeship, forbearance, love of one another, fear of God, unity, honesty, sincerity, love of country, protection of state property, I am sure we will be able to redefine the Convention People's Party in this present period. Having redefined it, we will be able to redeem its image, reposition it, and be able to serve and serve better to win elections in this country, to reorganize this country that has been met or continue to be met by two political systems who are identical twins. There's no difference between MPP and FDC. Ghanaians are yearning for change. That change, they wanted to come from the Convention People's Party. Yes. But I want to assure you, until we ready ourselves to show Ghanaians that we are ready, they will take us serious. Sure. I want to end on this note. And I am pledging that I'm committed to this dream of making sure that the Convention People's Party is reborn in this 71st anniversary, properly situated to win elections and make Ghana work again for Ghana. God bless us. Everything I want to do to match unite and see the goal at the end. We are we are humans. We are diamonds. We cannot be the same. But then, at the end of the day, we must unite to achieve our goal. By this, I want to introduce our main key speaker, the editor of Insights newspaper, one of the founding members of the CP. Today is a very special day. Today, we are marking 71 years ago when the young people of this country, ordinary young people, mechanics, drivers, farmers, the illiterate, and so on, came together and said that this country would no longer be ruled by the elite. That this country will be ruled by those who produce his wealth. That this country will be ruled by those who labor for his prosperity. That was the beginning of the Convention People's Party. At the heart of this effort was a central youth organization. At the heart of all of this effort was the central youth organization. And it is significant that on the 71st anniversary of the Convention People's Party, it is the youth of the party which have organized to put us together for this remembrance. Comrades, I am going to be very frank. And I'm not going to pull any punches. I'm going to be as frank as is possible. Because if we are not frank to ourselves, if we don't look into our faces and tell ourselves the truth, this party will never rise again. Thank you. The only way this party is going to rise again is if we can look ourselves in the face, criticize ourselves, and tell ourselves the truth. Why is this party in its current state? Why is the Convention People's Party in its current state? One of the reasons why the party is in its current state is that this party has failed to lead Ghana. That is the reason. So many things happen every day, every month, every year, and the Convention People's Party is silent. It has no voice. How do you mobilize people when you are quiet, when you don't speak, when you have no views on anything? How do you mobilize people? You mobilize people around ideas. You motivate people, that's why people follow you. People follow you because they know you will die for them. The silence of this party is deafening and it cannot be tolerated anymore. This party has to speak. This party has to speak on all the issues. This party has to lead by setting, for example. I am disgusted by the 
silence in this party. Can you believe that in four to five months, this country is going for an election, a crucial election? Can you believe that one of the most important things that is being discussed everywhere today is the voters register? Now you ask everybody what is the position of the CDP, and they tell you that this is my personal position. Are we going to mobilize with personal positions? We cannot mobilize with personal positions. This party has to lead and lead well. But I'm disgusted by this situation where important national issues occur at the Convention People's Party. The party that led us to independence. The party that created the foundation for what Ghana has become today is dead silent on the most important issues. What kind of a party are we building? The time has come for change in the Convention People's Party and it must happen or we ain't going nowhere. of his history. Yes. We have to respect this party because of its principles. Yes. We have to respect this party because of what this party has done for Ghana, Africa and the world. Who was the son of Dr. Rami Kruma? A villager whose mother was a trader and whose father was a blacksmith. I have seen photographs of your son at the Achimota School barefooted he didn't have sandals on. He didn't have shoes on. He didn't have covers on. Barefooted. That's ordinary man. From a minority ethnic group. From a small village in the western region of Ghana. That man whose mother was a market woman. In 50 years. Rose to the world scene and became him such a major force in international politics. That is the lesson of the Convention People's Party. CPP. That is the strength of the Convention People's Party. That is what we have to respect as members of the Convention People's Party. The fact that ordinary men and women can make the difference and will make the difference. That is why we should respect in this party. Comrades and friends, many times I hear many of us, sometimes very senior members of the party, and they are talking about the agenda, what has to be done? What is it that we have to do? What is the agenda of the Convention People's Party? The Convention People's Party fought for national independence, we fought so that this country will be free from British colonial rule. We were fighting so that the African can choose his own leaders. Because before independence, we could not choose our own leaders. The governor who sat in the castle was appointed by the Queen of England. In some instances, the district chief executives were appointed from England and so on. So we wanted to free ourselves from this system of government, which enables us to choose our own leaders and to choose them freely. Comrades, I told you that I'm going to speak very bluntly. Look, in 1949, in the 1951 elections, if Nkrumah had been asked to pay the filing fees you are paying today in the Convention People's Party, would Nkrumah have ever become the president of Ghana?
who suffered to build this party became its leaders, not people with large pockets. That is a new development. And if you encourage it, we will build something, we will call it Convention People's Party, but it will never be the Convention People's Party. And it is important that we recognize that. Comrades, people died to build this party. You probably don't know about the Martin Bihun era. CDP women, CDP young people, CDP adults were beaten to death. They were starved and so on. Only recently, somebody told me of a story of a pregnant woman in Kumasi. The opponents of the CDP called this woman. They spread her legs apart. And they pounded their private path with pistol until to die. As we speak here today, there is a story of a Santua in Dansuma. And a Santua was a victim of the bomb explosion at their Crossbow Stadium. For more than 40 years, a Santua has no known peace. Many of us know a Santua. Asantua is always in tears. She's crying. The pain still lives with Asantua. You probably don't know that Kobodouze lost his sister in this struggle. You probably have no idea. You probably have no idea how we came to establish the Conversion People's Party as it is today. And the sacrifices that were made to bring us here. Anyone who is opposed to the unity of the Convention People's Party, anyone who thinks about the Convention People's Party in terms of the size of their own pocket is a traitor to this party, must be exposed and must be shown the way out of this party. Why did we fight for independence? We fought for independence. The Convention People's Party led the struggle for independence so that the people of this country, the people of the Gulf Coast, will control their own resources. Resources embedded in the soil and resources above the soil. So that the people of this country will control their own gold, will control their bauxite, will control their diamonds, will control their timber and control themselves. That is what led and motivated the struggle for national independence. Today, have you asked yourself who controls Ghana's gold? Have you asked yourself who controls Ghana's diamonds? Under a champion, even in a champion, a military ruler, Ghana's laws dictated that you could not come here and exploit gold, exploit for gold, if Ghanaians did not have 55% interest in their company. Today, total Ghanaian shares in gold mining is less than 3%. Less than 3%. What is the Convention People's Party doing about that? When is the Convention People's Party going to stand up, to struggle, to fight, to insert that the gold of Ghana belongs to the people of Ghana must be owned by the people of Ghana and must be exploited for the benefit of the people of Ghana. When will that happen? Today, we have oil and gas resources. And our total interest in our oil and gas resources is 13 and a half percent. 13 and a half percent. What a shame. What a shame. What a shame. And when are we going to rise? to struggle, to fight, to challenge the status quo and build a new and dynamic Convention People's Party which will place real power in the hands of the working people of this country. More than will the CPP need that struggle. That is what is important. Why? All the people who are offering themselves for various leadership positions in our party, they are nice people. Some of them are handsome. Some of them are beautiful, some of them are friends, and so on. 
Is that what is important? No. 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 What is important is that this party needs leadership, which will lead us in struggle for the realization of the objectives of the Convention People's Party, which was led by Osante Fon Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Jake J. Wood, Anthony Wood, and others. That is a new party we want to build. Comrades and friends, we have spoken for too long about unity. Unity with DNC, unity with GCPP, unity with this and that and this and that. We are still where we are and we are growing smaller and smaller and smaller. Let the call go out from today that we in the Convention People's Party want to participate in that unity effort. But the talking is too much. The nice, nice words, they are too sweet and nice. What we need is action to unite the various factions of the Nkrumahist movement. And in that unity, that unity must have a quality. That unity must be a unity which is based on principle, not unity for its own sake. If you are going to achieve unity, we must be guided by clear principles. The acting general secretary of the party mentioned one principle to which I agree. And I do hope that all of us will be guided by that principle. This party should never become an appendage of any other political party in our country. Thank you. That is our problem. One of the first things we have to do is that no genuine Nkrumah should be allowed to take any position offered by any other political party. Period. Yes. yes. You cannot be an Nkrumahist struggling to help us to rebuild the Convention People's Party uh, and a minister or an ambassador at large in the government formed by our enemy. It is not possible. You cannot participate in the work of governments formed by our opponents and still be a part of building that alternative to those structures that have been created by our opponents. In any case, how are you going to justify hobnobbing with political parties who said that they refuse to recognize Nkrumah as the founder of Ghana? If you are genuinely Nkrumahist, how can you be hobnobbing with parties who say that they don't recognize Nkrumah as the founder? How can you be hobnobbing with parties which refuse to celebrate African Liberation Day? How can you be hobnobbing with parties which devalue, devalue Republic Day, the day on which we became truly independent. How can you help not with those parties? The problem is that many of us have no shame. The problem is that many of us have no respect for the membership of the Convention People's Party. And we believe that we are so smart that we can always pull wool over the eyes of our members. Our members are not fools. Our members know what it means to belong to the Convention People's Party. Our members know what to move this party forward. Our members know what Nkrumah stood for. And our members will continue the fight. We shall continue the fight until the true history of Ghana is written told and told in all of our educational institutions. Comrades and friends, these are very, very difficult moments for Osajifu's Ghana. These are extremely difficult moments for Osajifu's Ghana because this country is broke. ministers before have told us that national revenue, uh, that two thirds of national revenue goes into paying only 600,000 workers.
Now, if you live in a country in which two thirds of your revenue simply goes into paying 600,000 workers and you have a population of 30 million, you are in deep, deep, deep crisis. So, what is the way out for us? Many of our governments have resorted to borrowing. Anytime they can't pay the bill, they go and borrow. Anytime there is difficulty, they go and borrow. You have a pandemic, they go and borrow. Borrowing has become the answer to everything. The Convention People's Party does not believe that borrowing can resolve any of the problems that confront us. The Convention People's Party believes that if we take control of our gold, if we take control of our diamonds, if we take control of our bauxite, if we use our rivers wisely, if we allow the brains we have in this country to work and solve, this country can solve its problems. The solution to our problems is total mobilization of all the resources that we have and not borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. The time has come when the Convention People's Party must say goodbye to the principle of Lala Sulala. Lala Sulala was over. Comrades and friends, these 71 years have been years of pain and tribulation. These have been years in which our opponents desperately tried to kill Osama Bin Laden. This is a period, 71 year period, in which they subverted democracy. And sometimes we apologize. Go and look at the 
historical record. But when the Bill of Death was tried by three judges, Edward Akufuado was a judge in the trial of Obiji Milante. Justice Valet was part of the panel which tried Obiji Milante. And the third one, Akukosa. These three judges tried Obiji Milante and they found him guilty of terrorism. Go and read the judgment. Yes! <laughs> the judgment said, said described Obeche Milante as a terrorist. Yes. If Obeche Milante went to prison, Obeche Milante did not go to prison because the Kruman did not like him. Obeche Milante went to prison because three judges, including the father of our current president, decided that he was a terrorist and they sentenced him to jail. Yes. That is why Obeche yes. Milante went to jail. Yes. We are now ready for that debate. We are ready for the debate. And we are not moving backwards. We are really moving forward. Now you talk to those people, those organizations and their leaders, and they are quick to tell you that Britain is a democracy. They are quick to tell you that the United States of America is a democracy and so on. They forget that all of these countries have laws that look exactly like the Preventive Detention Act. They are ready to make excuses for other countries, but they are not ready to make excuses for their own country. Everybody will see them for what they are. Everybody will see them for what they are. Comrades and friends, we have come to the point where our party, our dynamic party, must confront unemployment. Unemployment is a major problem in this country. We send our children to school, the children that come out of school, there is no work for them to do. Some people used to talk about graduate unemployment. It is bad enough. People who have gone to the university and the polytechnics and so on, and they don't have work to do. Today, you know people who have not just gone to the university, have attained the highest levels. PhD holders who are unemployed, they are in our society. We must find something for them to do. Yes. It is only through employment that people contribute to the national development effort. Unemployed people cannot contribute or contribute very much to the national development effort. And it is our responsibility to create employment. How can we not create employment when our country is riddled with so many problems? Employment creation is about solving the problems that confront our country. So if you make a serious effort to solve the problems of our country, the housing problem, the housing deficit, the lack of access to health care, the lack of infrastructure for education and so on, if we make a serious commitment to this, we will be able to solve the unemployment problem in our society. Yes! Don't make a mistake. This convention people's party, the convention people's party led by our Sadiqo Dr. Kwame Kroman was a party of women and for women. Don't make a mistake. The Convention People's Party sponsored and had the first women in Parliament. Under the Convention People's Party, we had the first woman tractor driver, Madame Bongo. Under the Convention People's Party, we had the first woman pilot. Yes. Under the Convention People's Party, we had the first woman engineer. Yes. Under the Convention People's Party, women could rise to any level. Of course. Women were not discriminated against. Yes. Our party must stand for the rights of women and children. Yes. Our party must demonstrate yes. that in the political arena today, there is no organization, no force no. that respects women better than we do. That is our challenge. Yes! Women, about 52% of 
percent of the total population of Ghana. About fifty-two percent of the total population of Ghana is made up of women. How can you ignore fifty-two percent of your population when you want to develop? It simply doesn't make sense to discriminate against fifty-two percent of your population if you want to move forward. And that is why for us, discrimination against women will never be tolerated in the Convention People's Party. That is why the Convention People's Party is and will forever remain a party of women for women. That is why we shall take the lead. come from homes and so on. And you see what pregnant women go through on a daily basis, on a monthly basis and so on. The woman is pregnant and they say six weeks before delivery she can have a leave. Six weeks. And six weeks after delivery she has to go to work or she gets sacked. Have you seen a six week old baby have you seen a six-week-old baby before? How can you leave a six-week-old baby in the house and go to work? We need this party to start vigorously campaigning for the extension of maternity leave. We need to have it in our manifesto for this year's election. Extension of maternity leave for women is a struggle that we need to engage in. It's an important part of our struggle. In this country, there are so many people, so many categories of people who are discriminated against. One of the people discriminated against in our society, that happens to be people with albinism. In many of our traditional setups, albinos are not allowed to become leaders. Can the Convention People's Party keep right about this? Discrimination against people with albinism. Can we keep quiet about this? The Convention People's Party has over the years become the best center for many things. And in the last elections, we proved to the people of Ghana that this party has commitments that the other parties don't have. We selected a presidential candidate in a wheelchair. That was an important message. That was a loud and clear message to the world that in the Convention People's Party, everything matters. Your legs matter to us, but your brain power may even matter a lot more than your legs. This party needs to send out such strong messages. Yes. Such strong messages. I'm happy and I'm sad that I don't know when we are going to Congress. I'm very sad. Five months to an election and we don't know when we are going to Congress. It makes me sad. I feel horrible and so on. But I'm looking at the contestants and I'm happy about the number of women who have come up and said, hey, I want to be a leader. That's a positive sign. Yes. When I see women offering themselves of general secretary and so on, I say this party is moving forward. Yeah. When I see women offering themselves of vice chairman and so on, I say this party is about to take off. When I see women competing at the level of national chairman and so on, I say this party is about to take off. And I'm happier than everybody else when I see young people, many young people, the union members and so on. Run into the cross and say we are ready. But comrades and friends, comrades and friends, one of the things that should guide us as we move forward, the the only thing which should guide us as we move forward, ought to be our own conscience. Conscience! Yes. Let our conscience guide us! Yes! If you 
you go, you are candidate. And you go and take 500 seats. And you vote for that candidate. You have sold the future of the Convention People's Party for 500 seats.
at this point, we would like to take a solidarity message from the chairman and leader of the Constitution and Legal Committee, the person of Comrade Bright. navigate all the rough waters of this book. So please look for copies to read. He began with this and then that with some others. Please read this. But I want to make a short comment about my brother saying that we are very silent. Indeed we are. That's the last thing I'll say to you. CPP is too quiet. Somebody waits until the fourth year in his governance to discover that there are 80 districts without hospitals in Ghana in the fourth year. He has ruled Ghana for three plus years. Then he discovers by virtue of coronavirus that we have 80 districts without hospitals in this country. And are we silent? No. CBP, are we silent? No. If there are 80 districts without hospitals in this country, why are certain projects being undertaken? The health of the people first. Why? Are you silent? Why are you silent? Don't you tell him something? Because in the third paragraph of the introduction to the seven-year development plan, our philosophy is there. If you want a copy, we'll show you a copy. We want to create a progressive society where no one will have any anxiety about food, about shelter, about education, about health. And why everybody is giving the opportunity to educate himself in this country? So we started building a Raka Polyclinic, Kanishi Polyclinic, Osha Poly Osha Town Polyclinic, and others. We have been concerned about the health of the people. We don't go undertaking certain projects unrelated to health when there are 80 districts without hospitals in this country. So please, we are too quiet. I don't want to blame anybody, but we are too quiet. I hope that very soon our voices will be rekindled and we start telling Ghanaians who we are and what we are for them to come and join us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so we move straight uh, to, for a solidarity message from the women's play. Comrade Felicia Apoli, please come and give us the message. Yeah, yeah. 
family who wants the forward march of the Convention People's Party will be worried about the situation that we found ourselves unless we pretend not to know that the party is sick. The party is sick whether we like it or not. And it is incumbent on all of us to unite and forge ahead. I heard Mr. Pratt talking about uh, the maybe problems of the party, where we are now, and people struggling for positions. And we have to struggle for positions because we have to get good people to be in position in order to build a party. Not just anybody. We have to be truthful to ourselves if you're talking about unity. Unity that didn't just come because we are congregating to cut cake. No! We have to be honest and sincere and be truthful to ourselves that this is what we want to do for our part. Who is happy? The other day I was saying it on one of the television. How can you be leading an empty party and be proud of it? We have to go to the people, eat with the people, sleep with the people. That's where organization is. Organization is not in Accra or Tamale or the big big towns. It's very sad that in the 21st century, CPP, we don't even have one member of parliament. Not even one. So if the Minister of uh, Finance is going to uh, talk about the budget or the President is going to leave the thing, they will tell you that uh, you don't have a member of parliament. Meanwhile, we built that chain in parliament. So why is it that we don't have anybody there? facing some challenges. But any organization without elders, as the tree will put it, the council of elders of the party has stepped in. We all have to abide and respect the decision of the council of elders so that we move forward as a party. Nobody will stop anybody from contesting. If you want to be chairman, flag bearer, it's an open contest. Because Aja Hamdatu has one vote. Mr. Kwesi Pratt, who nearly brought this building down, has one vote. You have one vote, I have one vote. So we shouldn't do anything that would take us back. Every day we'll be singing for We don't want to be associated with maybe the retrogression of the party. Let's all go ahead and make sure the unity that we are talking about, we do it wholeheartedly. You can't be talking about unity, then you'll be cutting legs. That one is not proper unity. I'll speak the truth, and the truth shall set me free. Forward ever, backwards never. Let's take this country out of the problems of the NDC and the NPP. Where are all our consequences? Where are all our strongholds? All the intimacies, we've lost them. This year's election, we have to be strategic and make sure we put our resources where we can win seats so that CPP will be relevant in Ghana politics. How can you be shouting when you don't have one member of parliament? You go on radio and TV and say, oh, I've been in this office for six years. Have you ever heard of the My teachers were comrades who are sitting back sitting behind me. Now I'm Mr. Acting Chairman, so he calls me his boss. in this office. So youth, if you're talking about unity, elders, you have to make sure you learn from people that know the history of this party. We are in this party not because of uh, my father, my mother, or we 
believe in the ideals of Dr. Pame. But that's why I'm in the fact. Nothing more, nothing else. Because if I'm also going to tell you the credentials of my father, Allah gave me that, maybe you write a book. But that is not why we are here. We are here because we want to mobilize with a united front. At the end of the day, CPP will be the winner. There's no loser when two brothers or two sisters have disagreement. No! We are all winners. So the outcome of whatever is going to happen, we all support it for us to move forward. There's victory for us and we shall fight and conquer all our enemies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, comrade. So now, uh, we dive straight to the board of thanks. Comrade Adams, Elijah Adams, please come and give us the The Greater Accra Regional Organizer. The business cadres you have and um, having this this 71 anniversary year with us. Oh, comrade, senior comrade, uh, Green Street, we thank you for coming. All protocol of that. We thank each and everybody here for making it possible for this program to take place. We thank you all. Bye bye. Comrade Abi, please. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I would like to say that, uh, as we said, we started by the invocation of the flag. We also made by the invocation of the flag. 